All right, so we can go ahead and get started here. Um, just as we start, a few housekeeping items. So you may have noticed that you are muted for this webinar. So that is just so that we don't speak over anyone. There aren't any awkward unmuting moments or anything like that, but this will be recorded. So you will be able to get a copy of this after. Also, you may have noticed that we do have the question and answer function. So if there are any questions for Shannon, our presenter, or any questions in general that you want to type out, please feel free to toss them in the question and answer function. And we'll either get to them in the moment uh, by chat, or if we see or we're able to open up live uh, with Shannon there as well. Um, but we will also have a section at the end for question and answer. And also I just wanted to go ahead and acknowledge that Shannon and I are in Vancouver and we are in the unceded um, lands of the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, and um, Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish, and <clears throat> um, sorry, one second here, Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations that have been stewarded by time, by them since time immortal. And yet we have Shannon Reeve here, who is our digital content um, strategist here for fundraiser and crowdfunder. And I'll kind of let it turn it over to her to get this started. And again, please feel free to use the question and answer function. Um, and also there's no such thing as a question that we feel is too small. So please feel free to just type them out and we'll be happy to get to them. And without further ado, Shannon, I'll give it over to you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, we're going to talk about the four elements of a campaign goal. Um, so one thing that we find that is one of the hardest things to do for new creators on crowdfunders is to decide what their goal is. So this presentation is not meant to be the you have to do it this way. Everyone's situation is going to be different, um, but this will give you a good idea of the factors that you need to consider when you're choosing your goal. So some of this is probably pretty obvious um, and some of it is not going to be. So I'm hoping that everyone learned something today. And just as a bit of introduction, thank you, Kemble. Kemble's also our implementation manager here at Crowdfunder. So he's here to help people get set up on Crowdfunder. And then I am our digital content uh, specialist as well as our crowdfunding strategist. So it's my role to kind of scour the internet for best practices and tips and tricks, and then apply what I've learned as a strategist at Crowdfunder to help bring you um, the best advice that we can. Uh, that's me on the left there with my little snake, Sunny, when she was just a baby worm. Um, she's a good four feet long now, um, so not a baby anymore. And that's Kemo there on the right. So this is actually not a super long presentation, um, but like Kemo said, lots of time for questions and please feel free to interrupt us at any point. We're not formal here. Uh, we like to have conversations, so let us know if there's anything that is unclear. But there is going to be a lot of math here, pretty simple math, um, and I will try to do the majority of it for you. And more math, 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 more math, and then hopefully the Q&A won't involve math because our brains can only do so much math. All right, so let's get started. Campaign goals, this, yes, this is a bit of a love-hate relationship because it's exciting to want to hit a goal, but it's hard to decide what we want to do as a goal. Um, they are super effective, though, because if you have an all-or-nothing campaign, then you absolutely have to have a goal. But if you have a keep-it-all campaign, uh, you can choose whether or not you have a goal. So, that's recommended, but not mandatory in a keep it all campaign. And we will uh, go over the differences between the two. But first, why? what are the benefits of having a goal and taking the time to plan your goal? So first of all, this ensures quality of product, because if you don't properly plan your goal, then you might have to scale back on certain things while developing your project in order to make sure you don't go over budget. So it's a one good way to ensure that you have the highest quality of product that you can. Um, it also helps soften the blow from the unknowns, um, such as pandemics, you know, they tend to happen occasionally. Um, so there is one very important element to a goal that will help with this uh, specifically, and I'm not going to tell you what that is right now. We'll go over that a little bit later. 
Um, it also helps you deliver your promises within a respectable timeline. So if you have, again, a proper goal, then you know exactly what it's going to take to get your product to your customers. And if you have planned ahead for the contingencies, then this will better help you be able to um, deliver that product, even if all of those unknowns are hit, such as a pandemic. And then hopefully at the end, it leaves a bit of a profit. It's, again, so if you plan properly and you also plan to have a bit of profit in there, then you don't have to delve into your profit to fix any unknowns that have come up. So the long story, or the long story short is we're going to plan, plan, plan to make sure that we have everything in place that we need to make sure that um, any kind of, you know, shipping delays or pandemics or anything like that um, doesn't derail us from our, our end goals that are not only monetary, they are what are our goals in general. So which can campaign type are you using? We have to go over this first because goals are very important in both of these types of campaigns. So Crowdfunder has two different types of campaigns, keep it all or all or nothing. Keep it all is where you will, you um, keep every uh, contribution that comes into your campaign, whether or not you hit your goal. So it's real time. So if you say have a goal of, $4,000 and someone um, buys your reward for $25, you get that $25 in your um, payment processing account right away, whether or not the goal is hit. Um, this is suitable for projects that you can deliver your product to, um, no matter whether or not you hit your goal. So it's more of an on-demand thing. So this would be a, you know, if you're, um, if you've already gotten a comic book in public or in um, printing right now, and you've got you know 500 comic books that are ready to go out, um, you could pretty much just deliver those on demand. You might want to consider keep it all for that because you will still get some money coming in, even if you don't get the entire goal that you want. <clears throat> all or nothing campaigns are where your um, your contributions are effectively pledges. So it's a promise of a contribution until you hit your goal within a deadline. So goals and deadlines are mandatory with all or nothing campaigns and they cannot be changed after your first contribution has been made because this is what um, keeps your campaign trustworthy and transparent to your consumers. Because if they see that you're well on your way to hitting you know, a $5,000 goal, um, and you end up changing that to say a $10,000 goal, they're, they're going to be a little bit sketched out because of that. So we wanna make sure that everything is set in place and you don't change it on them after. Um, so once you hit your goal within the timeline that you've set within that 60 days, it doesn't have to be 60 days, it can be less. Um, then you will be able to charge all of your supporters who have made pledges and you decide when to do that. So this is suitable for projects that need all of your funds before you are able to actually get the creation out there. So, you know, if you want to, if you want to make sure that you have enough funds coming in to print those 500 comics, then you will consider an all or nothing campaign. And most uh, projects I would say on Crowdfunder start off as an all or nothing campaign. And then once they hit their goal, they can actually change over into a keep it all campaign so that any contributions coming in above and beyond that goal are more of a on demand type of thing. So it turns into keep it all. And then you will, um, you will keep your contributions as they come in. They're no longer pledges. We do have a help article all on the differences between keep it all and all or nothing if you still are confused. Um, so, you know, don't worry if this is the first time you've heard about the differences between these two. Um, that's very common and we're happy to answer more questions on that. <clears throat> all right, so what are the elements of a goal? This is the bread and butter, the meat of this presentation. Basically what we're gonna to do today is we're going to go over all of these um, elements. 
So product, operation, marketing, and revenue. Those are the four key elements of your goal. And we're going to go over um, an example today. And for every one of these elements, there will be an action for you to perform to determine what, um, what your goal should be for that element. And I will give you an example. And then at the end of this, we will have a goal for our little fake project here. So let's start with product. Your product is whatever your project is, whether that's a comic book, uh, a tabletop role-playing game, an, event an invention that you came up with, um, a novel, whatever that is, that is your product. So how do you determine the costs for developing your product? Uh, so for this, you can do uh, what we call a life cycle assessment. And basically what this does is it helps you determine your costs of your product from concept to consumer ready. So life cycle assessments are traditionally done to determine what the environmental um, impact of a product is, but we can use the we can use the logistics and the general idea of a life cycle assessment to determine what our costs are going to be from our um, from our creation. So again, this is going to depend on what project you have. But you want to consider everything from your concept to when you were thinking about this to actually creating um, the prototype and then making this prototype consumer ready. So for concept, you want to think of um, what materials you needed, what tools you used. Did you require any consulting that you had to pay for? And as well, consider your time. And I'm going to talk about this a lot because I find that some of my own consulting um, talks with our clients involve a bit of almost therapy because I, I tend to have to convince them that their time is, is important. Um, you might not think so, you know, you might not think all of these hours that you put into a project is worth a cost to your, uh, to your audience. But it is. I mean, your time is valuable to you. You could be doing other things for yourself in that time, but you're not. You're using your time to create something to make other people happy. So that is important. Um, and then your creation um, itself. So when you are making the product in bulk, what are the materials? What are what is the printing and or um, production costs? Was there editing that need to be involved? Um, or if you have an actual invention, uh, quality control and assurance will require a cost as well. And then consumer ready is, sorry, I kind of jumped ahead of myself in the, in the creation. Consumer ready is when you would do the bulk bits of that. So printing or manufacturing, packaging design, um, that kind of idea. And then with especially printing and manufacturing, you will want to consider the fact that there will be fixed costs. So costs that you're going to incur whether or not, um, sorry, it, it doesn't depend on the number of creations that you make. So it doesn't matter whether you have 500 comic books or a thousand comic books, that's your fixed cost. Um, but then you're also going to have per unit costs. So some of these, um, aspects are going to be fixed. Some of these aspects are going to be per unit. And at very least, your printing or manufacturing is going to be your per unit cost. So keep that in mind. And our example is, no surprise here, going to be a comic book because it's the most popular on Crowdfunder right now. And it's honestly one of the easiest <laughs> to uh, determine the costs for. It's definitely not one of the easiest to create. I'm not saying that, but it is one of the easier ones to uh, determine what our end goal is going to be. So, you know, for example, our concept, our working edition, we are going to have our paper, pens, pencils, brushes, ink, paint, or any digital um, programs that we needed to create it. Um, the creation of the first issue. So once you're beyond your concept and now you want to create the first um, issues that will 
determine your proof of concept. So, you know, you might print off five or 10 or something like that, that um, you're going to either send to um, an editor or you're going to need an illustrator or a colorist, for example, if you're not going to do the coloring yourselves, that's going to be the creation of the final consumer ready product. So you want to consider all of those fees. And then consumer ready is essentially what your printing is. And this printing is going to be likely per unit costs um, that depend on a minimum amount to print. So, you know, you have to determine what your minimum is going to be in order to make the cost of your reward um, viable. So, you know, you could probably have a minimum of 100, but that means that you are going to have to charge your um, backers or your supporters a premium because you're only ordering five or 100 as opposed to 500, which will make that per unit cost a lot less. So, in our example, we'll, we'll just use these. And a lot of these I've come up with either very um, short attempts at um, um, searching for these answers, or it just kind of came up with them off the top of my head based on what I know. These are not be all and end all. These are just examples. So, you know, paper, $5 to create the prototype that we used. Pens, pencils, brushes, $25 total. These are fixed costs. These are not going to be per um, editing fees, a grand. Actually, these are probably going to be a lot more than that. Um, illustrator fees, two grand. Colorist fees, two grand. Um, these are approximate costs in USD. Um, printing for 500 copies. I chose this because based on my research, this is what keeps the price per unit in and around $2. So in the end, um, when we have our goal, we're going to have um, a per unit cost that um, is what our reward is going to be for our backers. So in order to keep a rather decent reward cost, this is around what the per unit cost we want it to be is. So for our first example, for our product, we have our fixed cost, which equal to about six grand, and then our price per unit cost, which will add another grand because of 500 copies. So for our product, we've spent around uh, seven grand so far. And now we want to talk about operation. And for operation, um, operational costs, like how are you going to know what your operation costs are? And to do this, one thing that you can do is a scope of work. So a scope of work is you determining the work needed to um, get your creation to your supporters with a great relationship. Because I'm going to assume that this is not the last time that you are ever going to want to have a project um, crowdfunded. So if you're going to build your build your brand, essentially, then you want to foster positive relationships. So you want to make sure that you have determined the work that is going to be needed to foster these important relationships so that when your, um, when your customer gets your product in hand, they're perfectly happy and they will want to back you in the future. So a scope of work um, has a bunch of different tasks. And again, this is not, oops, sorry. This is not the be all and end all, but these are some things that you will want to consider. Um, some of these are going to be more for people who have, again, a physical um, invention or bigger product that requires manufacturing and assembly. And then you are probably going to need um, a, a workforce to help you with that. So then you're going to have salaries, then you're going to have workspace rentals if needed. Um, there's going to be communication all through this process. So communication with your customers. So is that going to be your website? Um, so you're going to need design and maintenance around that. Are you going to need phones for customer support? Um, so if you're going to do that off your cell phone, then consider your cell phone bills. I don't recommend that. I recommend keeping your um, personal and professional lives separate. Um, but, you know, for cost sake, you might just need your cell phone for that. And then um, any app and third party fees. 
So what I mean by this is, you know, are you using a platform for communication that will require you to have some fees? So for example, MailChimp. MailChimp has a free version where you can send X amount of emails per month for free. But if you go over and beyond that, then you are going to be paying fees. So those are the types of fees that you want to consider in here. So communication between um, you and your clients, your customer base. And then crowdfunding. So crowdfunding will have fees. So this depends on what, um, what platform you use and what fee model you use on that platform. So since we're crowdfunder, we're going to use crowdfunder as an example. And we will determine these platform fees a little bit later because those will depend, sorry, those will depend on what the end goal is. So we can't determine that right now because we're going to need to know what our end goal is to determine what the platform fees are going to be. Um, and then customer care. So um, are you going to employ people for customer support or are you going to be your own customer support? You can employ what are known as virtual assistants. So there are um, agencies, I guess for lack of a better word, who you can pay um, a flat fee or you know a per month fee and essentially hire a virtual assistant to do whatever it is you want them to do, whether that's you know monitor your website, um, be a customer support person to reach out to, anything like that. So if you're not doing that on your own, then you might want to consider some customer care um, agencies or you know maybe friends and then are you going to compensate your friends for their time? That kind of idea. So think about your entire operational process from creation to getting um, your creation in the hands of your supporters and the customer service that is required after that. So your, your project does not end with your product in the hands of your supporters. It ends when you are done with your project completely, which I'm assuming will never happen. So keep in mind that you are going to need um, some funds to keep that customer care going afterwards. So for crowdfunding fees, like I said, this will depend on what pricing model you've chosen to work with on Crowdfunder. So with our Simply Free, and we have three, and I'll go over these um, each in detail. With our Simply Free, you only pay your um, payment processing fees. So that's with Stripe or PayPal and or PayPal. You can use both if you like. So the average fee um, is we're going to call it 4% because these fees, depending on what area of the world you are in, differ. So in North America, they're in and around 2.9 uh, to 3.4% plus um, I think it's anywhere from 39 cents to 40 cents per transaction. So all of these are going to be assuming that you are in North America. If you are not, if you're in Europe or um, Australia, this is going to be a bit different. So it's going to be lower if you're in Europe because payment processing fees are, I think, around 1.6%, 1.9% plus um, X number of euro cents. Um, so definitely change that number if you're not in North America. I think if you're in Australia or New Zealand, it's going to be more or less the same because our dollars are fairly similar. Um, but yeah, in other places, it's going to be different. So that means that your total cost will be your project cost times uh, 1.04. So that is what your payment processing fees are going to be. Because with Simply Free, you have no platform fees. Crowdfunder is just going to ask your supporters if they will give us an optional tip. Um, and that tip goes entirely to us. And if they don't tip us, that's fine. We don't take anything more from you. So you only have to consider your payment processing fees with the Simply Free model. With nearly free, this is the um, fee recovery model. So this is where things get a little difficult because you cannot guarantee how many of your supporters are going to cover your fees. So with nearly free, this is where you have um, your, pay your payment processing fee. And you'll also have the platform fee. So that is 5% from Crowdfunder. But we're going to ask your supporters to cover your fees. 
And we see anywhere from 80 to 95% of people doing this. Um, it could be more, it could be less, but for our purposes, we're going to use 80% because that is the average. So to determine what your crowdfunding fees are going to be, we are going to need to take um, the project cost times the fees. So all of those fees, again, we're going to assume a payment processing fee of approximately 4%. Um, we're being very conservative with these numbers because we would rather overestimate than underestimate. So uh, project, sorry, payment processing fee of approximately 4%. Platform fee of 5%. So your project cost with fees is going to be this. And then we want to minus the fees that are going to be recovered. So that will be minus the project cost times your fees times 80% of those fees covered. And that will be, sorry, I skipped ahead. And that will be the total cost if you've chosen nearly free. With not free, this is the easiest one. Well, I guess these two are easy. Not free and simply free are easier because um, you will have your payment processing fee of 4%, your platform fee of 5%, and that's where we don't ask your supporters anything. The majority of people on Crowdfunder do not choose this one because your creators, you want to recover as many funds as possible. So most people choose either simply free or nearly free. But if you really don't want to ask your supporters for anything more, if you just want them to pay for um, their, their product and that's it, that's totally fine. You can choose this one and then you can choose whether or not to eat the cost or to include it in your final goal. But since we need the entire project cost to determine what our crowdfunding fees are going to be, this is actually the last bit of math that we're going to have to do. So we're gonna to have to leave this kind of in limbo for right now, but not for very long. So for, us, for our example, essentially um, for the scope of work with our uh, comic books, we're not gonna have any PPUs um, because pretty much everything else is going to be flat fees. Unless you know you have, um, unless you go above and beyond what your expected is, then you might have to pay more for your virtual assistant, for example. But I mean, you can determine that later. That's totally fine. So this is assuming that you know we have a website. We're going to use our phone plan for any you know customer service issues. That's if you want. You can always just do it entirely online. Um, and then, you know, I threw in 250 bucks for a third party app, just in case you want to have something like MailChimp or uh, Mail or Light or something like that. And then we are going to assume in this example, the free plan. Um, so that would be our project cost times 1.04, but we don't know the entire project cost yet. So we're going to shelve that for now. So basically, our, for our operational costs, we do our scope of work. Um, with our example, we have our fixed cost of 850 plus whatever crowdfunding will be. So this is going to be TBD for now. And then we go on to marketing because you're going to want to get your project out there, obviously. So for marketing, you have to think about what you're going to talk about and who you're going to talk about it to. To do this, the best thing you can do is customer profiling. Determine who you are targeting and where they can be found. So customer profiling is done with marketing for all kinds of things. So even nonprofits do it. They do what's called donor profiling. It's the same idea. Who are our donors and where can they be found? And that is the best way that you can advertise your product pointedly. So it's not sort of a spray and pray type of idea. You're, you're going to have a much more successful time doing this with purpose. So customer profiling. Um, and this, again, is going to be different, but you want to target the right crowd. So determine who they are. Are they of a specific age group? Um, do they live somewhere specific? What are their living arrangements, um, interests, hobbies? Do they have a specific job? Do they own something in particular? Um, what's their gender? What's their ethnicity? What's their education level, household type? All of these things are something to consider depending on what your product is. 
And the best example I had for this is actually myself. Excuse me, need a quick drink here. <clears throat> so I once backed a project on not Crowdfunder because it was years before Crowdfunder existed, but I did back a project once and it was a foldable kayak. And we are based in Vancouver, like Kemble said. So if you don't know Vancouver, um, it is a very outdoorsy type of city and it's also very expensive. It's the most expensive city to live in in Canada and it's one of the most expensive cities to live in in North America. So if there's one person that is pretty common to find around Vancouver is people like myself and Kemble who live in, you know, condos and we're very outdoorsy. So we don't have a whole lot of money to spend or space to keep a regular kayak. And we have lakes, we have the ocean, we have inlets, we have amazing places to kayak all year round in Vancouver. And I love to kayak, but I never got one because again, one bedroom condo. Um, and even if I could store it on top of my car, we have an underground parking spot. So I wouldn't be able to put it on top of my car. So I saw a targeted ad for people exactly like me, and it was targeted um, for people who lived in Vancouver and who couldn't either couldn't afford or couldn't store a normal kayak. So this is a folding kayak that I store under my bed in the winter because I don't like cold water. And in the summer, I can actually just keep it in my car. And it's, it's small and it fits. And I am the perfect type of person who's going to want this. You know, who's not going to be the perfect type of person who's going to want this someone who owns a giant house in the prairies without any water features. So that's probably not the person that you are going to want to spend a lot of time and money marketing to. That is why customer profiling is so important because this helps you target the right crowd and make sure that the money that you're spending on marketing is going to get to the right people. And again, where are they? So where are you going to target them? Are they on a social media platform? Um, do they belong in specific types of groups on Reddit, for example? Uh, do they have any influencers that they might likely follow? Um, where might they currently make online purchases? What websites might they frequent? What forums might they participate in? These are all questions to ask yourself. So you not only know where in the world that they are, but where on the internet are they? Because you're going to need to know that too. And how are you going to target them? So this is step three. Are you going to create a video? Are you going to um, do in-app banner ads, just email newsletters, website, influencer, sponsor promotion, physical print posters and ads? I mean, this, this is still a thing too. So what are you going to do and what are you going to need to do it? So video, uh, professional pictures taken, that kind of idea is all what's going to be in your marketing plan. Um, and for our example, the who, I'm oops, sorry, the who is, we're going to keep it really simple. We're going to keep it older than 35 and younger than 35. So I'm splitting it at the millennial group here. Oh, sorry for a second. I thought my, uh, <laughs> I thought that was going to be the uh, fire alarm in my building. Sorry. Um, yeah. So the reason I do this is because depending on who our comic book is targeting, the younger crowd doesn't tend to be on Facebook. The younger crowd tends to be on Instagram, TikTok, Discord, um, lots, Twitch. Twitch is a thing, right? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not with it, apparently. And then you'll have your loyal followers. So the ones who are following you right now, they are probably going to be the ones that are on your website. You're probably going to target them via your newsletters. So these are going to be our budgets for this. Um, this is including, you know, the price per comic book itself, the design of, you know, ad space, videos, that kind of idea. Um, and including, if you like, professional pictures taken of your product. Um, so this is what our budget is going to be for that. So it's in and around um, $1,100 American. So product, operation, marketing, revenue. Revenue might not have been on your mind at all 
um, again, maybe you just want to get that out there and you haven't considered making money on it. I highly recommend that you do consider making money on it. Like I said, your time is valuable and it's actually a bit counterintuitive with uh, marketing when you, when you give something out essentially quote unquote for free, because that's, it's instilling in your customer's mind the idea that you don't think that your product is valuable. So if you don't think your product is valuable, why should they? So if you put revenue profit into your product, that is telling your consumer that this is, that you love this, this is good. You think that it has value. So identify that. Um, and to do this, you need to determine what your goals for this campaign is. So this specific project, not overall, I'm sure your overall goal is to make it insanely um, profitable and famous and et cetera. That's what all our goals are. But for this campaign, this one campaign, what is your goal? To do that, you need to determine what your SMART goal is. And I really hope this isn't the first time that you've heard this term, SMART goal. And if it is, I will tell you what it is. But basically, this is what you define success to be. So a SMART goal is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. And this does not have to be monetary. This can be something as simple as increasing your following. So think about what you want to achieve with this campaign. Do you want to earn a profit? Is that like the main thing that you want to do? Do you want to just make up for your already spent costs and not incur any extra costs? Like, do you want to hit um, zero essentially? Or do you want to increase your following to build up for a bigger release. So maybe this campaign is just releasing um, the first brand new um, chapter of a new series of comics or whatever. Maybe with this chapter or this single release, you, you don't have a huge um, monetary goal, but you want to build your following so that when it comes time to release the entire series or just the entire book, you have that following there. So determine what your goal is, um, and then you can use that to determine what your revenue will be. So I'm just going to say that we want to have a, a modest profit of 10%. So 10% of what we have so far is $930. So this is revenue except for your crowdfunding fees, essentially. So I've, um, I've added all of these together and that is what 10% of that is. So if I have, you know, a lowish goal and I want 10% revenue, then that's what I'm going to get hopefully. And I'm perfectly happy with that. All right. Number three is more math because now we need to determine what our final goal is with the crowdfunding fees involved. So for our example, since we chose Simply Free and we only have to worry about payment processing fees, our crowdfunding fees are going to be all of the last row of that table times 4%. So that is $398.40. We're going to round it to $400 because I like the look of nice round numbers like that. So now we can finish our table for 500 copies of our um, of our comic book. We have about seven grand for product, 12 grand for operation, or sorry, 1200 for operation, uh, 1100 for marketing, and about 900 for revenue. So our goal is $10,360, and that's it. We're done, right? No, we are not done. Remember, I said that you want to plan for anything and everything that might happen. This is why we always suggest you include the almighty buffer of 10%, especially if you're doing an all or nothing campaign, because what ends up happening is um, approximately 5%, 5 to 10% of those pledges won't come in because um, perhaps the customer didn't realize that they didn't have the money on their credit card or maybe their credit card um, expired and they didn't realize it. Any of those things could happen in the 60 days from the time they pledge to the time it's actually come time to charge uh, their credit card. 
So that's why you want to include the buffer. And this also includes things like, you know, refunds and exchanges. So maybe they didn't get their, their shipment. That's not your fault, but you're still going to have to fix it. Um, maybe it came damaged or, you know, maybe anything and everything that could go wrong will go wrong. Um, for example, my, um, my kayak, I ordered in, uh, May of 2019. So by the time that campaign was done and they were ready to get the product manufactured, COVID had hit and shipping was a mess, obviously. And I ended up getting my kayak, not until I think September of 2020. Um, I was not mad because they kept up communications constantly letting us know um, how far they are when they finally were able to uh, get manufacturing up. Um, but they also mentioned that like shipping costs have skyrocketed and they were going to eat the costs. So they did not push those costs onto the consumers. They ate those costs. So I'm willing to bet that they had that buffer built in. Um, so you not only have your profit buffer, but you have your, your Murphy's Law buffer, what we'll call. Uh, Murphy's Law is anything that can go wrong might go wrong, like pandemics. So make sure you include the buffer in your goal. So that means our goal is 10,360 plus 10%, which is approximately 11,400. Again, like I said, I like round numbers. Oops, go away. I like round numbers. You don't have to do this, but I personally would put this goal up there just because people look at that goal and they're like, yep, okay, that's a cool round number. I see you making that goal. So there you go. There is our goal. Um, so with our goal of $11,500, $11, uh, we have five copies of our comic book. That means that we can make each comic book worth um, approximately $23, which to me is pretty average for a comic book. So I, that's a very good price for a, an independently created comic book. And that's not to say that you can only have that reward there. Um, you obviously can go above and beyond your goal and hopefully you do. So you can have um, rewards that are worth more and some rewards that are worth less. Maybe someone just wants to back you, but they don't necessarily want the whole book. And maybe you have, I don't know, a sticker or a pin or a bookmark for them. That's, you know, a $10 reward. But this, this reward is going to be the one that you're pushing, the, the meat and potatoes of your campaign. So you're hoping that you'll have 500 copies of your reward bought for approximately $23. What about shipping, Shannon? You didn't say anything about shipping. Why would you do that? We Shipping is something that is very important and we've been stressing about. Why don't I include shipping in your goal? Crowdfunder does not do that. So we understand that shipping, so much can happen with shipping. You can't plan who is going to buy your um, product and where they're going to be. You can only offer your product to people, say, in your country and within one specific um, shipping cost range, but then you're limiting yourself. So you're still going to need to know what shipping costs are going to be for certain areas of the world because you will need to put it into Crowdfunder, but Crowdfunder is going to add those costs after and not include it in your goal. So when someone um, purchases your reward for $23, We'll say that reward's going to be $5 for shipping within the continental US. Um, they will pay um, 23 plus five, they will pay $28, but only $23 is going to count towards your goal in Crowdfunder. So you will still need to know it so you know what to charge for shipping, but you don't need to include it in your goal. Okay. All right, so to recap, we went through the four key elements. We did a lot of math, I'm very sorry, but thankfully you didn't have to do a lot of that math. Um, and then we did more math and then we had a sneaky secret fifth element and even more math. So I'm kind of hoping that your questions don't include math. And if they do, that's totally fine. I will do the math. Um, just, you know, remember that I've only had one coffee so far today. <laughs> um, I, this, 
ended up going a lot longer than I anticipated. Um, and I talked a lot longer than I anticipated. So Kembo, I'm sorry I haven't stopped for questions until now, but no worries. do we it have any? <laughs> doesn't look like we have any questions at the moment in the question and answer function, but what we can do is if you see at the bottom, there's the raise hand function. So I know sometimes I'm not great at typing questions out. If you raise your hand, what we can do is unmute you and you can ask your question directly. I'm better at vocalizing things. I also love the sound of my own voice. So it's a little bit easier for me to type things than typing things out. So please feel free to either raise your hand and we'll be able to unmute you or use the question and answer function, which you can find at the bottom there. And you'll just be able to type that out. So let's give a, uh, everyone a few minutes here uh, just to get those kind of questions brewing. Um, also, this is recorded. So if you do want to watch it again kind of later, or if you're half asleep kind of thing, and you want to ask these questions later, you are able to touch base with us through our emails. Or what we also do have is our crowdfunder hub, which does have open office hours four times a week where you're able to pop in and kind of ask these questions and have these. Um, yeah, as Shannon's showing here, you can go to uh, event calendar or live events. Oh, live events? Live training? Yep. Nope. Live events, a little bit uh, under members up. Oh, there we community. are. <laughs> yeah. And this will bring you to other webinars that we have going to be running as well as open office hours. And you come and it's just a Zoom room. It's like everybody within the university and just kind of ask these questions. So we'll give everyone a couple more minutes here just to see in just two minutes, just to potentially get these questions brewing. Or you can again, use the raise hand function. Um, while that while that goes on, I'm going to take you on a little tour of the creator hub. Um, just FYI, this is not attached to the crowdfunder platform. So it is a different sign in, I'm pretty sure. So if you've tried to sign in with your crowdfunder um, credentials, it won't work. You have to sign up first. Um, so we have the activity feed here that will show you anything new forums these are for you guys to talk to each other about whatever you want so you know if you're a comic book creator and you are looking for um a reputable printer ask ask your fellow creators in here anything you want to know do we have, also, a, Shane, we have a we have a great question so where should we include taxes ah taxes um taxes are what you should include in your um Pretty much your your end your end goal. So taxes will eat into your profit. So it will depend on where you live in the world and how you will be taxed. But keep in mind um, this. I'm assuming that everything here is going to be um, a non a non or not a nonprofit. So the only time that you will not really have to worry about this is if you're a registered nonprofit and you're doing some sort of creation for that nonprofit. Um, so assuming that everything is going to be profit, then at the end, you are going to have your income. So, and everything that you've gathered from this crowdfunder campaign, and then you're going to have your write-offs. So you're going to be able to write off um, what you've spent on pretty much everything. That doesn't equal, you know, you don't get to write off $11,000 and say, I spent $11,000. So, you know, I don't have to claim that as income. That's not how that works. But um, you're going to have to assume that you were going to have to account for, depending on what country you're in, at least 10 to 15% tax. Um, so it's kind of up to you what you want to do there. Do you want to let that eat into your profit? Do you want to add on another 15% onto all of that to cover your taxes? Um, the reason this is a very floofy answer is because I'm not an accountant. So you, if you're, if you're staying under $10,000, then chances are this isn't going to make or break you come tax time. So you could probably figure that out on yourself, you know, add, add 10%, add an extra grand so that you have a little bit of a buffer come tax time in case you owe more. But if you're going over 10 grand, my suggestion would be to spend the, you know, couple hundred dollars it takes to hire an accountant to do an assessment for you. It's not much. Um, I've done it before when, um, 
when I was sort of running a very small, small business as a dog walker, I spent a couple hundred dollars and I hired an accountant to help me figure out what my, um, what my end of year taxes were going to be, what I was going to pay and how much I needed to budget into my profit. So that is an entirely different scenario. So I can't really say exactly what, but that would be my best suggestion is if you're going over and above about 10 grand USD, I would hire an accountant to help you with that. You're doing great today. Is there anything else, Campbell? Um, not at the moment, it seems, but that's a great question. Yeah, and it's also um, always good to have an accountant and have a professional just to vary by state by state and province by province. Yeah, yeah so everyone's, again, everyone everyone's like, different. Every province is different. Every state is different. Um, I think in this toolkit, so our uh, the president of Connection Point, which is um, the company behind Funder or Crowdfunder, helped develop um, this campaign strategy guide, and I'm pretty sure there's a guide on taxes in here as well. Um, do do. Either that or we, I think we threw it into the cost of fundraising. Yeah, I don't see taxes in here. Um, you know what? I should do up something on taxes. We're going to do some research and we're going to do something up on taxes. But this is a good thing to talk to each other about in our forums as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. So let's give like one little last push here for questions. So if you're just typing one out, feel free to just kind of type something so we can see. Otherwise, we'll thank you for your time this morning. And again, <clears throat> feel free to go to the Creator Hub. Um, oh, and Bayard just said, appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Bayard. Great to have mm -hmm. you here with us. But yeah, again, um, what you can do is just go to the live events and drop in our next webinar or uh, check out some of our office hours. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time. And we look forward to seeing you again. All right. Bye, everyone.